welcome to Allison Park Church this weekend. Come on, let's put our hands together like this. Come on, sing this out, the God who made the God. together sing it
take another moment to just welcome you to Allison Park Church, especially if it's one of your first times here with us, or maybe you're joining us here for our egg hunt experience. We're, we're just so glad that you're here. And we have one more song that we're gonna sing together. It's called Goodness of God. And you might see people around here raising their hands or, or closing their eyes. And that's just a way of us, for us to express our thankfulness to God. So if this is something that's maybe newer to you, I encourage you participate however you want to. There's gonna be words on the screen, but if, in whatever way comfortable that you want to just participate with this ex experience, I just encourage you as we sing this together to just be encouraged by these words today.
today that is sort of a unique challenge, and that is we're going to talk about what today is historically in the in the you know the story of Jesus Christ, and then we're also going to apply this to what it is to value family. So I, I know this is a challenge. Let me just kind of start like this. So when I was in ninth grade, I ran track. I was pretty fast at that time. Not so much anymore, but at that time I was a sprinter and I was the third fastest in the 200 meters in my middle school. Now I had only run the 200 meters and the 100 meters and they decided in the championship they wanted to, to really compete and so they put me into the relay race and I had never run the relay before. Now, there's a part of the relay race, the 800-meter re relay race, where each runs 200, right, that I had never practiced, and that was the passing of the baton. Now, that could be a little complicated, right? So they kind of walked us through it. The guy that was supposed to take it, you know, I was going to take it, and they said, here's the deal. You get into this little space, and in this little space, you got to take that baton. He's going to stick his hand back like this, and you're supposed to smack the back of his hand or the, the, the palm with, the, with the, the baton, and when he feels that, he's going to grab hold of it, and then he's going to start to run. Okay, so I was second leg. Uh, we're just a little bit behind when I get the baton and I take off running and I make up distance and I was into it, man. I spent myself in my 200 meters so that when I got into that little space, I didn't have much gas left, okay? Now, he was so excited because we had the lead that he decided to take off a little early. You can see where this is going. So I was supposed to smack the back of his hand with the baton, but he started to move as I was leaning down and I decided to lean out a little bit to try to get it there, and I fell head over heels. Baton went flying everywhere. It was a cinder track. I was bloody everywhere. We were disqualified. It was a horrible moment. Let me just tell you, let me just tell you, passing the baton is important in a relay race. In fact, it's not just how fast you are. It's actually how good you are passing the baton that helps you to win that kind of a race. Now, we all understand that parenting and grandparenting is a legacy thing. We're actually trying to raise up a ne the next generation and to pass on what's important to us, the values that we have, and if you're a person of faith, the faith that you carry to the next generation. And there is nothing more precious <laughs> than when you have that moment in time when your child is born and you carry that baby for the first time and you then realize how much you love this little baby you just met and what a responsibility it is that you have to take care of them and raise them and pass down some things to them and help them to become everything they're supposed to be. And I guess I want to ask the question, what's involved in that? In passing down your values in passing down your passions, in passing down your faith in God. So we're going to take it from that perspective. And here's what I want to present to you, and that's this. Um, passion for something cannot actually be taught. Uh, information can be taught. Skills can be taught. But passion is something that is not so much taught. It is caught. It's, it's because you're around somebody that has something in them and on them that is that is a bit contagious. It's a spirit-to-spirit -spirit kind of effect on somebody's life. Parenting is a lot like that. It's about what's on you that you are trying to pass on to the next generation. Now, I said we were going to study today the historical event that happens one week before Easter Sunday, which is what we call Palm Sunday weekend, right? And Palm Sunday is the story of Jesus a week before his resurrection, just a few days before his crucifixion coming into the city of Jerusalem with this huge gathering of people that were declaring him to be their Messiah. And we're going to read out of John chapter 12. Now, there are four um, narratives or histories of the life of Jesus. And today we're going to pick it up in chapter 12. John, Jesus' best friend, is writing now, one of his disciples. And it tells us this. A large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but to see who? Lazarus, right? Okay, let's pause for a moment. Wasn't Reggie Dabbs amazing last weekend, our guest speaker? He did such a great job. And he actually told the story that we are now referring to with this name Lazarus because in chapter 11 of the book of John, we get the story of this man who had died, one of Jesus' friends, was in the tomb or in the grave for four days. And Jesus then shows up and says, roll away the stone and calls him out and raises, resuscitates, we could say, 
Lazarus from his condition of death. And I love how Reggie captured this picture. He, he talked about how sometimes because of our past, what we've come out of, that our past and us as well, we sort of have a stink to us. Didn't he say that, right? His message is, what's that smell, in case you need reminded. And he talked about Moses in the pitch. How many of you remember what pitch is? And he said that's kind of where he came out of and came out of that and God redeemed him. So, okay, Lazarus is coming back from the dead and people are gathering not just to see Jesus but to get Lazarus' autograph as well, right? They wanna find out this story. This is amazing. How could this happen? So thousands of people gather on this day. We call them Palm Sunday. And it tells us that the chief priests were also there and made plans to kill Lazarus as well. It's interesting to know that when God starts to do something in your life, not everybody in the world be happy about it. So what did Lazarus do? He just, he just came back from, from the dead and they wanted to kill him because Lazarus represented something about Jesus that the powers that be did not appreciate all that much. So there's a huge crowd and, and some are gathering to worship and some are gathering because they're plotting against him and it's just a few days before the crucifixion. And I wanna, I wanna take you there now from a, the question of contagiousness now, the passion that's contagious and I want you to imagine for a moment that you were brought there on this particular day uh, by your mom or dad and so you're there they're there to worship they're there to declare Jesus messiahship and you're you're in tow that you came in to Palm Sunday in Jerusalem, just like a lot of people, they have their little one's hand and they've come in and there's buckets they've brought to take away the loot of the candy today. Did you see them come in? All right, so, so now here they are on Palm Sunday and they, they're, they're, they're walking together and then all of a the sudden, these kids see their mom or dad begin to explode in declarations about Christ. Now, here, here's what I want to uh, say. There, there are actually four things baked into this story that I think are things that create influence, things that build legacy, things that make us contagious. And the first thing is, is what we believe. So it's the conviction that we carry. So that's point number one. What I believe will make a difference in, in my ability to pass on a legacy. So, so they began now to shout, it tells us. Verse 13, John, John 12, verse 13. They took palm branches and went out to meet him. By the way, every time I read palm branches, I love, how many of you love palm trees? Anybody in the room? Do you know what I think of when I think of palm trees? I think of the beach. Come on, somebody. Can you imagine? Okay, come on back, come on back. Sorry about that. All right, so they took palm branches, right? And they began to wave them in the air, and they go out and they shout, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Now, think of yourself, little boy, little girl. You see your mom and dad. They walked you to this particular moment, and then they see this character, Jesus, coming in on the donkey, and they begin to lose themselves. They grab branches off trees and they're waving them in the air. Another, another gospel says they put their coats on the ground to be able to have the donkey walk on their coats and they're shouting, Hosanna, save us, it says. You are our savior. Blessed is the king. Now, now here's what you first would have understood if you're son or daughter in the house that day, and that is that these these people were saying, Jesus is different from anyone who ever lived. They had a conviction about who Jesus is and, and who he was. They, 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 they heard about Lazarus' resurrection. They had heard about the miracles. They had, they had seen his love and compassion. They knew he had been transforming lives. And now they begin to say, he is set apart as different. He is distinct. Now, the Jewish leaders were there also to say, he's different. He's a threat. We don't like what he's doing. But listen, there is something about Jesus that is unique in the history of the world. You see, what we celebrate next weekend is this. Jesus is the only one who, when they killed him, came back from the dead. He has conquered death. He's alive today. That makes him different from any other human being. And you can hear out of my life now the conviction. What I believe is that Jesus is different from anyone else. And that's why I follow him. And I want my kids to know that. And I want my grandkids to know that. In fact, I was in Texas a couple weeks ago attending a conference and um, the Uber driver, I was in her car and we're going somewhere and she asked me the question that I always get asked that makes everyone uncomfortable. 
what do you do for a living? They said, <laughs> and so I'm like, well, <laughs> I'm a pastor. And then she said like this, why would you want to do that? <laughs> and I was like, I wonder that some days too, you know, and, <laughs> and, I, and I said to her, well, listen, let me just tell you the truth. For me, it's all about Jesus. I said, I'm not really that into religion. And while I do love my church, I didn't really get into it because I love church. I, I just love Jesus, I said. And I said it with that kind of passion. I love who he is. I love what he taught. I love I, well, you know, the kind of person that he is. I love what he's done in my life. And for me, it's about following Jesus. And, and everything else, I try to navigate the best I can. And she said, oh, okay. She, the conversation sort of ended at that. But listen, I, I would just want to say to you, if you're new to Allison Park Church, maybe you're here for the first week. Uh, you're here for Easter Egg Hunt. Allison Park Church, look, look, we just, we just like Jesus here, okay? Uh, we're not so much about institutionalism or religion. Or, look, we're glad you're here. We love you, and we love Jesus, and we want to follow him because we believe he is distinct from every other. Think about it now. This, this poor um, man who raised in Israel under Roman oppression, uh, now there are, uh, what, I think they say almost 9 billion people in the world. 3 billion people consider themselves followers of Jesus Christ. How can that happen if this man was just like everybody else, right? So, so look, we believe, we believe in Jesus, first of all. Okay, here's the second thing that helps us pass on a legacy, and that's how we worship, how we worship. So again, the historic event of Palm Sunday can you see him now? You're the little boy or little girl. You see your dad, mom waving palm branches in the air. And they begin now to say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And this particular moment was an expression of worship. Now, if you, if you come from a Pentecostal charismatic background, you might expect that what I'm going to say here is that in order for you to, to pass on a legacy, that you have to be an outward expressive worshiper. Like you can't be introverted and you can't be quiet because look, they were out loud and they're jumping around and they're shouting and they're waving palm branches in the air. And if that is your expression of worship, you're like, amen, Pastor Jeff. I love that. Okay. But listen, Palm Sunday isn't about outward expressive worship, although I believe there is something that happens when we get active and declare God's goodness in the world. Actually, their worship at this particular moment was way more radical than that. Because what they were actually saying is, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is, listen, the king of Israel. Now, they were shouting in, a, in an era with an empire who had a King Caesar who had declared himself to be God. They were saying out loud in front of everybody, we believe that Jesus is God and he is our king. Now, this was radical because it was an expression of submission. We now have come to this place where we're going to submit our lives to our new king, the Messiah, the one that we will worship, the one that we will follow. This was, first of all, impressive. If you were a kid watching your dad shout this because you were seeing, and this is now my new authority. I now belong to him. I'm now submitted to him. Listen, worship is not so much about style as it is about the substance of of surrender to God's purpose and to Jesus' leadership in your life. Can I get in a wave at me if you agree with that, right? It isn't so much how loud you are, it's actually how surrendered you are to his purpose. But it wasn't just a declaration of obedience. It actually was a revolutionary act. They were risking their lives to say, here's our new king. Uh, they, it wouldn't have been at all unlike the Roman Empire to sweep in with their centurions and soldiers and not just kill Jesus, but everyone else who had gathered at that moment because they were declaring allegiance to someone other than Caesar. This is part of what made the chief priests nervous. Part of why they wanted to actually get rid of him was because they were afraid of the consequences of this movement that Jesus had created around himself and, and listen, I think there is something about being a person who is a follower of Jesus who isn't just there conveniently that helps the next generation see that it's real. 
right? I think, I think there has to be almost this edge to it to say, I am not just a churchgoer. I'm not just a religious person. I'm not just a good citizen. I am a radical, sold-out person who is trying to follow King Jesus in my life. And, and maybe we don't get as much opportunity for that risk, I, although I think things are changing a little. i just tell you, I talked with a friend. I can't tell you what country he lives in, and I can't tell you his name because that would not be good for him. But I was talking to him on the phone, and he said, Pastor, you got to pray for me because we are under it. And I said, well, what's happening? And he said, we actually have to go to the government every month to apply for a permit to continue to be open as a church. And I was like, every month? That seems pretty redundant. What, why would you have to do that? He said, well, because the government listens to what I say. And if they don't like something that I say, they will actually shut down all of our accounts. We won't have banking. We won't have our facility. They'll just sort of pause us. And I said, wow, that's intimidating. What do you do? And he said, I just keep preaching. I was like, come on, bro. Like, I just keep preaching Jesus. I, I just keep, and people are getting saved. But he said, you got to pray for us. Isn't there something about that spirit that says, I don't care what the consequences are. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I, you know, I know other people might not like this, but I'm going after God. And look, kids that see their parents with that kind of worship expression. Uh, I think there's something very contagious about that. Okay, let's keep going now. Let's keep going now. Um, third, third thing is not just what I believe and how I worship, but also what I trust. Now, I'm in a little, little teaching moment now in this message. And that, that is, um, as they were watching Jesus ride in to Jerusalem on this day, remember he lived in Galilee, around the Sea of Galilee, up in Nazareth, and he's coming up to Jerusalem and as he's entering Jerusalem, now they begin to make these declarations about him. It tells us again, verse 13, they took palm branches and went out to meet him shouting, Hosanna, or Hosanna. And uh, this means to, to save us. Everybody say that word, Hosanna. Okay, they were shouting that. You're our savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. So they're declaring him king. But actually, the, the people that were gathered here on this day were evidently students of the scripture because what they were doing was declaring the promises of God that had been made about the Messiah over the person of Jesus. Actually, you can see this in Psalm 18. The psalmist had written about a thousand years before about this moment on Palm Sunday in verse 15 of, of Psalm 118, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. And then verse 25, they say, Lord, save us. Hosanna. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. You're our Savior. And then they quote this promise about the Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That's what they were saying. They were saying, what God promised about you, we now declare to be true over you, and we agree with this that you now are fulfilling that which God has promised would happen within our life even the way he entered on a donkey it, it says Jesus found a young donkey verse 14 and sat on it as it is written do not be afraid daughter Zion see your king is coming riding on a donkey's colt so they took these two verses one from Zechariah one from Psalm 118 and they declared it in faith over the person of Jesus as he was coming in to fulfill these prophecies. Now, let, let me just give you a little glimpse into my parenting philosophy for a moment. Do you know, there are so many times whenever you're raising kids that you feel, um, well, let's just say it, a little bit like a failure. Anybody else feel like a failure besides me? You're like, oh man, God, why did you give these kids to me? I mean, there has to be somebody better at this than I am. And, and then there are times when you're confused <laughs> and, you're, and you're concerned and you see trends or patterns and you wonder, where is this going and what can I do to, to deal with it? And here's, here's some good news. This is why I'm so glad that I have a partner in heaven to work with, my heavenly father, so that I can call upon him when I feel weak and confused and don't know what to do to act on behalf of my family because I need him involved in my life and in my kids' lives. And one of the things that I did from the time they were conceived, when they were even in the womb, is I would take a promise from God, from the scripture, and I would declare it over them. 
You know, Psalm 112 says, God, for those who fear the Lord, who take great delight in his commands, their children will be mighty in the land. They as the generation of the upright will be blessed. So just like they shouted over Jesus, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We know this promise has been made over you, Jesus. I would lay my hand on Mel's pregnant belly and say, may God make you mighty in the land. May, may the generation of the upright be blessed. And I would take the promises of God and speak in faith over them. And sometimes when they got older and they were teenagers and they were getting ready to get on the bus to go to school, I would say, before you leave, I want to just pray over you. Now, I know, I know, listen, I know a lot of times they, they hated this. Is that, is that okay to say? Uh, so, but I would be like this. May the Lord bless you, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, I stand here for a minute now. I believe God's going to make you mighty in the land. Listen, what I was doing, activating my faith, putting my trust in something bigger than me, bigger than the culture, bigger than the challenges, going back to be rooted in the word of God and praying that in faith because there's something about that that grounds us. These little ones that had come with their parents potentially to this Palm Sunday event, heard their parents say, we trust the promise of God. What God has said, we agree with, and we come into alignment with what it says about the Messiah, and we hold on to this. Do you know, Jesus told this great story, this great parable in Matthew chapter seven, and he says, there were two people who both built houses. This may be familiar to you, and both of them had the same dream to have a house that stands strong. And then both experienced storms. The wind blew, the rain fell, kind of like the storms yesterday, right? And the, and the streams rose and beat against the house. And one stood strong and the other fell with a great crash. And Jesus said, the ones who hear these words of mine and put them into practice are like the person who built his house on rock. As a parent, a person of faith, I want to bring my family back and root us into the promises of God and the principles of the scripture and the wisdom that comes from him and, and put my feet there so that when life gets turbulent, I can say my family is standing on something sturdier than just my wisdom or my abilities or my money or whatever. I want my life to be built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness, right? So what I believe and then how I worship, and then what I trust. And then the final is um, this idea of what I declare. So part of the reason why the crowd was there was because of Lazarus, remember? They, they were there because people were talking about what they had just seen and heard about what Jesus had done there in Jerusalem. It tells us verse 17, now let's go to John chapter 12. Last few verses we'll read together now. The crowd was with him, excuse me, now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. And many people, because they had heard about this sign that he had performed, showed up because they were curious. Uh, what I love about this particular moment is, you know, people don't gather to talk about a miracle that happened 20 years ago. They gathered to talk about a miracle that happened last week. And let me just say, faith in the risen Jesus should have evidence of God doing something now. We don't want to be the kind of people who say, oh, to the next generation, listen, in my day, back whenever God really moved, there was something, and you know, in this day, no, no, no. What we want is to have such an active conviction about who Jesus is that we have stories to tell right now about how we couldn't pay the bills and God supplied, about how we didn't know where to go and God gave guidance, about how God was faithful to heal and deliver and restore so that we can say to this generation, we are not talking about a dead, old faith that has no relevance for your life today. Today, we are talking about Jesus who is right now active in the world. And listen, I don't want to just tell you about a religion to follow. I want to tell you about a person to fall in love with. It's the person of Jesus Christ, and he's still doing stuff today. 
So let's tell a good story. You know, we sent a missions team to Sierra Leone with evangelist Will Jones a couple months ago. And as they were there preaching the risen Jesus in that nation, um, Pastor Chris Griffin shared with me this story. Why don't you go ahead and give us that picture, guys? This you're going to see on the screen. His name is Emmanuel. And Emmanuel came into the meetings, outdoor meetings, on a walking stick because one of his legs worked and the other one he had to drag behind him. And so he was in a condition where he could not walk or run because he had one very damaged leg. And so they gathered around him and they prayed over him in the name of the risen Jesus. And as they prayed, just like it says in the scriptures, where God did miracles like this, his legs started to strengthen and straighten out where he could put weight on it. And he tossed the crutch aside and he started running around the meeting grounds, screaming and celebrating that Jesus had healed his body. So there you got Pastor Chris Griffin and Emmanuel holding an unnecessary crutch (laughs) because Jesus is still alive and doing works in our world today. I want to pass on to my kids a faith in the real Jesus of now, not just some past religious artifact. And when we go into Passion Week, for me, this is not just the routines of rituals. It is actually an encounter with the person. Listen, we, we, we would love for you to worship with us, not because we're trying to get your name on a roll, but just simply because we want to help you encounter the person of Jesus. We want you to know him because he truly is amazing. Can we just close our eyes and turn our face toward heaven wherever you're at? And uh, here, here's what we're going to do. Again, this is not about a church. This is not about religion. This is about a person. And the whole message is really to help us, first of all, think about what we believe, what our conviction is, how we can pass whatever it is we believe down to our our families. But it's also an opportunity for you to sort of come out and declare it like, Jesus, I wanna follow you. I I want a personal relationship with you in, in that I want more than just religion and routine. I wanna know you in my life. And I want you to take the dead things in my life and raise them just like Lazarus. I I want you to step into my life and help me as a parent or a husband or a wife. God, Jesus, I believe in you that you are alive and I want you in my world today. Now, here's what we're going to do. Everybody in the room, just in a moment of quietness, I would love to be your helper in leading you to pray a prayer to reach out, okay? And, and here's what we're gonna do to set this up. If you have not yet made a decision to be a follower of Jesus and today you wanna cross the line of faith to decide to do that. Or if you've been away from God and today you need to come back to him and recenter yourself on him. I'm gonna count to three. When I get to the number three, I'm gonna ask you to lift up your hand as an acknowledgement to say, yes, Jesus, I wanna follow you or I wanna come back to you. I wanna worship you. You are my king. You are my savior. Just like they shouted on Palm Sunday. And I ask you to raise your hand because it's not just a thought in your head. It, it requires a choice. And faith is a choice thing. It's, it's an action that we take. And it's a trust moment. So again, if you want to come back to, to God or today you want to cross the line of faith and say, I want to follow Jesus, you just get your right hand ready. Just sit where you are. When I hit that number three, you just throw your hand in the air boldly, okay? All right. Get yourself ready now. God wants to do something new in your life today, okay? On the number three. One two, three, just shoot up your hand. Say, that's me today. Yeah. Just keep your hand up. Raise it toward heaven right now. Feel that tension in your arm reaching to God. And everyone who's willing to pray out loud with me, would you pray this now? Say this. Say, Jesus, I believe in you. You are the son of God. You are the one who came to save me. So I ask you now to do that. Save my soul. Forgive my past. Make me right with God. For I open up my life to you, and I invite you into my world. Have your way in me. And I believe, Jesus, you are alive, risen from the dead. Give me new life, a fresh start as I follow you today. In Jesus' name, amen. That's beautiful. Can you just give it up for those that made that choice today? Beautiful. All right. Can we all stand up now? And uh, let me just say, if um, we can help you in any way in your journey spiritually, we'd love to do that. 
Uh, I know there's gonna be a lot of activity out in the concourse in a minute, but at the Welcome Center, there's a little book that we'd love to give you, a little book of where, where do I go from here? And uh, some other QR codes on there that will help you get connected with resources available to you to take some next steps. If you ever need anything, please see me or any of our staff. We'd love to serve you in any way that we can. And we're just so glad you've joined us today. So the team's gonna sing a song in a moment, but first we're gonna do some things for traffic flow. So if, um, if you are going to collect your kids or grandkids, people you brought with you for the egg hunt, we're gonna dismiss you to go first. So that way there is a little less clog in the flow of people walking and doing that. You can then get in line. Everybody else can remain for a moment. Sarah and the team's gonna lead us in this song and then I'll come back and dismiss us in a moment. Listen, enjoy the Easter egg hunt. Have an awesome day. Hope to see you next weekend. Don't go away. We'll be right back with the last minute. Hey, this has been an amazing, amazing morning, right? And the Easter egg hunt is just getting ready to go. We're, we're so excited about this. Um, and we're really excited for that incredible message that Pastor Jeff uh, gave this morning. What a great kickoff to Palm Sunday, into Passion Week and Easter, Good Friday and Easter. So I love this time of year when we get to come together and we get to celebrate who Jesus is, what he did, that he's alive, that he rose from the grave. And because of that, our lives can be transformed. So what a great kickoff this is. We're gonna have a lot of fun here, but we're glad that you've joined us online. Yeah, absolutely. And if you decide to give your life to Christ today, one, we're, we wanna say we're excited for you. This is an amazing decision, um, and an amazing journey that you're about to start yeah. on. So if we wanna talk to you about that, so if you can text 2023 decision to the number 97,000, or you can even just fill out a connect card on our website or app, we would love to talk to you about that. And if you need prayer, we would love to partner with you and pray for you. Um, and you can also text please pray and then the number for me to the number 97,000. Or you can even fill out that connect card on the website or app. We would love to pray with you. Yeah, we'd be honored to stand with you uh, and just be you know, in your corner cheering you on, right? And, and we want to thank you, those of you that have been standing with us in regards to your giving and your generosity. Thank you. You're, you're one of the reasons why all this is happening here. This, this, uh, this wacky egg factory, wacky, wacky factory. factory egg, whatever it is, it's packed out here. Um, and we've had, uh, we mentioned earlier, over 1,500 kids plus their parents that have signed up to be a part of this. So it's all because of your giving. So thank you for your generosity. And if you'd like to be a part and you'd like to make a difference uh, with your generosity, you can do that on the APC app on your device. Uh, you can also go to our website, allisonpartchurch.com. You can even text. You can text any dollar amount to the number 84321. Again, thank you so much for your generosity. 
Um, yeah, got, that's gonna be it. This for is us exciting. Here at the Wacky Factory, Egon. We're She's gonna, gotta go get in yeah, line I to get some go eggs. Get in line. I'm gonna try and <laughs> get in there and get some eggs. But you, you better it's, hurry up. I better hurry up. We got a wild line, but we'll see you guys next weekend for Easter. We'll see you. Bye.